Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the finest Dawn of War Soulstormcast, this side of East Yorkshire. And today we've got a 1 versus 1 on Tranquility's End. On the other side, as the Dark Eldar, we've got Espada. On the other side, as the Chaos Space Marines, we've got STFU. STFU will be opening up with triple cultists, a Chaos Armory, and a Plasma Generator. Whereas Espada is going to go for a couple of Mandrakes, a Plasma Generator, and a Dark Boundary. Now, I'm umming and ahhing about this Dark Foundry, I don't think it's actually going to be a good idea if you're going up against cultists when they go for that Chaos Armory, as I imagine they will definitely be spamming out those uh, grenade launchers. In fair enough, the jetbacks to come out, they'll be able to kill the cultists fairly quickly, especially if you get two or three of them all together, and the Hellions will be able to knock around and smack up these um, heretics that are building up stuff. But if they get enough cultists with a, with a squad size large enough and all their grenade launchers that they can, and even if they get like like extra grenade launchers as well on top of that, then the jetbite is going to fall but uh, fall down pretty quickly, and then the hellions will be knocked around as well. So, I'm not I'm not entirely sure. I think maybe warriors with the cyberite upgrades and stuff and the archon and stuff that might be a way forward here. But then again, in saying that as well, the grenade launchers will also bash those guys around. So, catch 22 boys and girls, catch 22 indeed. We are going to see a heavy bottle to it outside of the um, main base here next to the strategic point here. I think this will... I mean, sometimes you'll see one being popped down here. I think this is a lot easier to defend. Plenty of negative cover around to make advantages of. And, yeah, it's just a harder place to get a surround on in the grand scheme of things. Whereas this is a little bit wider open. And it's usually the the, the one that you, get, that you lose the easiest. So, may as well shore up the easier defensible sides. Monkey's Laboratory is on the way to be finished. First squad of Hellions has been done in. Relic been left to its own devices for now. As the Dark Elder, I imagine, are primarily focused on getting their prime targets here. Like I say, look at that. Grenade launchers knock them over. A fair bit of damage to one model. And I do believe we've got relatively okay firing accuracy on the move, uh, do Hellions do. But, I mean, they're close enough. I'm trying to get some stabs in, but they're not fast enough to get the stabs in, which is a problem. So they'll fly on over. Oh, my God. Look, look at this camera work. Sometimes forget to do camera work. In fact, I quite often forget to do camera work. But look at this dynamic. It's like as if we're there watching it live or something. We've got Reaver jet bikes off in the distance. But the Hellions aren't going to be doing much at all in this situation, I assume. Yeah, they're going to try and go for the Heretic, but it's a little bit too fast for them. Going to try and bomb and weave between things. That's the cultists. Throw loads of grenades at them. And quite low on health are those models. Got one Reaver jet bike firing away. Might get that heretic. And in fact, he indeed does. Got a couple of volleys, and that jet bike is already hankering for a repair job back at home. Thinking about going up against the heavy bottle turret. Saying, catch me if you can. But no catching, no cans, I'm afraid. And at the moment, Cow Space Marines, you've got all your bits and bobs captured. Dark Angels, sorry, not Dark Angels. Um, Dark Eldar. Only just about to catch up on them points-wise. As the cultists move over into the center. And I like how they're moving all in tandem here. Making sure... Because, I mean, if one squad goes off on their own, Hellions jump on top of them, tie them up in close combat, jet bites come over and finish them off. But, you know, apes strong together, as that film said. What's it called? Planet of the Monkeys? Something like that. Who knows, really, what that program was called. Critical location. Attempting to be captured by the Mandrix. On left and side, do have those critical location... Countdown victories on the go, so always important to make sure that you keep them on. One single Reaver jet bike just poking and prodding, seeing what he can see. And he's going to try and circumvent these guys entirely and be left alone in the base, attempting to pop up a couple of plasma generators, which will force some of the cults back home, actually. Well, the listing posts have been upgraded, so I've got to be really careful with your positioning with the Reaver jet bike. He's attempting to shoot one down. Where is he? He's hiding. One goes down. Another one soon to follow up. And the third one attempting to run past all the heretics, or sorry, the cultists even. Same difference, really. It's a synonymous term, boys and girls. But will they be able to get him? Just manages to narrowly shave his legs off. But plasma generators will be finished on the jet bikes. Avoiding death narrowly once again. So very nice stuff from Espada. Hasn't really been able to get that much in the way of... Uh, I mean, he's got the map control. He's got all the critical locations more or less on his side, with the exception of the center one, which is currently getting captured. 
But staying inside the base and causing some mischief does force the cultists to rem remain home. Like I said, I've got to stick together to be able to do something decent. We've now got the control of the center. Critical location countdown on the go. Hall of Blood on the way. We've now got four Reaver jet bikes. And are you in tier You're about to get into tier two. Once we're in tier two, they then go for their modular firing upgrade, whatever you call that. And these guys will absolutely melt those cultists. So it's a limited window in which these cultists are able to stay alive here. I assume you're going to go for tier two. You are at 25%. So you are a little bit behind. Yes. Well, in fact, you are, you're quite considerably behind now. Jetbikes, once again, just ignoring the cultists. Current economy is 91 and 20. Compared to 104 and 40. The economy is on the Chaos Space Marine side. Plenty of heavy bolts have been placed inside the base, though. So, I mean, even though they've got the economic advantage. And, well, to be fair, they've got a spare bit of money saved up as well, sir. I suppose if you're only buying cultists and you don't need to reinforce them because you haven't lost that many... Probably got a lot more money than you would normally have. Mandrix have gone for that. Close combo upgrades. I love the aesthetics of it. Very nice stuff. So every bolt it goes down. You have a jet bikes moving relentlessly. And I do believe you've now got your upgrade to the weapon damage. That is why they're starting to engage, but they're in the neck. Well, only one of them in the negative cover now. The cult is falling thick and fast. Like I said, it only takes a couple of seconds. And when one Reaver jet bike is low on health, it just pulls him back. That's the other ones on the front lines take the damage. And that is like, what, a, a fistful of cultists dead in the space of about five seconds? And these guys do not have the speed to avoid them. So cultists now no longer a viable option. Mandrix now running amok inside the base. Heretic just trying to stand very, very still. Maybe the Mandrix can't see him if he remains that way. Going to see some cult, uh, cultist infiltration, which sounds like a decent idea, but... Got to bear in mind that the Dark Eldar, I mean, how much... Yeah, you've got 50 souls at the moment. So they are able to use their Piercing Vision global ability, which will allow one infantry squad to be able to spot infiltrated units. I mean, what's the point in infiltrating your units if they're all dead? But more cults will come out. And he's sticking to it, baby. Don't kick a man while he's down. Don't kick a man at all, really. And, oh, I like this. A cheeky machine pit off in the distance, although a scared squad is coming on over. Already going for those dart lances. Anticipating to break down the buildings, but always good to get a anti-vehicle unit on the field, even if the opponents don't have any vehicles on the go for them. Just nice in case they try and do some counterplay. Cultists, are you here? Yep, you're just standing around, minding your own business. You'll be getting your grenade launchers on the go. Vehicle cap increase, so I assume you are going for... Oh, right, so one defiler. Vehicle cap increase, two defiler. And then a heavy bottle to it, just for good measure. Makes sense. Cultist just trying to pull away some of these Weaver jet bikes. And that's fairly decent for them, because at least it stops them from firing at anything else. But at the moment, losing all the plasma generators. Down at times, indeed. As the last of the cultists fall, here comes the first defiler. And I don't think you've got the money for a second one. We'll attempt to build up another plasma generator over here. We've still got a fair few of their listing posts on the go. In fact, this one not being taken out, so maybe a bit of a fur par from the Dark Eldar here. Even jet bikes have been forced to retreat home for repairings. And I don't think, no, the Dark Eldar don't want to hustle with this tussle at the moment. We're going to focus on taking out the extremities of the economy at the moment. So... You know, it was, it was quite a good idea from old STFU. Artillery making sure he's able to fire out the Scare Squad from a distance. Mandrakes are cutting their way through the listening post. Relative ease. That's no one gone down. Current economy is for 86 and 0. Compared to 122 and 20. So even then, it's not a huge economic advantage. But then again, do you need it if you've got a larger standing army? And you're able to hem these guys in. Another plasma generator. Oh, oh, your first one, you haven't finished building it. Have you forgotten about it? No, you have not forgotten about Five it. Five minutes until taken hold victory. The cultists, or the heretics even, not shuffling too fast to build it up quicker. I assume they're just going to try and keep the health up as much as possible in case the Weaver jetbikes come back and knocking. Here comes a witch squad after getting their witch cult arena. Mandrix now infiltrate as well. No armory. Oh, no, you've still got your armory, so you will be able to upgrade your 
Actually, is it in the army that the cultists get their fiery eyes, or is it in the Chaos Temple? Can't remember. Have a wait. Chaos Sorcerer coming out. Ah, so Chaos Sorcerer will be able to spot these guys. Fair enough. The rebuilt listing post over here. They've also upgraded the relic listing post into a tier 2 one, so let's hope they're going to mitigate some of the economic losses. Scourge is focusing on the heavy bottle turret as the Defiler attempts to fire as much artillery at them as humanly possible. I spot some other lads over here. Colt is attempting to get a decap on the critical location. Probably got four, well, just over four, four minutes, minutes now. Able to capture it. Morale being broken. This guy's not going to do all that much damage. They will be able to once they get it back. Scourge just definitely don't want to be taking any damage. They are very glass cannony. And the sorcerer. Not too keen on these guys knocking around his neck of the woods. Gives him the old Gandalf, you shall not pass. Yeah, as long as he can keep the morale down. That building won't be going down anytime soon. Oh, so secret ammunition. Oh, what's that? Have you not gone for that upgrade then? No, that, oh, sorry. That must be a different one. Never mind me. Ignore me. I know what I'm on about. Sometimes. Another way, Mandrakes are just chilling out. Running away. One, Only one dude survived there. Attempted to build more heavy bottle trucks. I don't think this is the idea. I mean, you've, you've got another defile up incoming, but you must be aware that the Dark Elder are going to do something in retaliation, no doubt. When the Dark Elder start getting their witches and their warp beasts out, it'll be quite a serious situation for you. Well, you're alive for now. Take the moment, enjoy it. Carpe diem, all that stuff. A second alive is a second not being dead, which is pretty darn decent. All things considered. Now, what would you do in this situation? Um, I mean, well, possessed marines and obliterators. That's that's usually the mainstay of it. Possessed marines will be able to go toe to toe with the witches' squad. Now, if the witches are joined by the warp beasts, they use their combat stimulants, they win all day, every day, because there's only one squad of possessed marines. Oh, and I suppose the obliterators will be tied up uh, if someone goes in close combat with them. I mean, it, it's 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 hard. You, 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 you're on the back foot here. You need to go for a bit of shock and awe. And the elite squads of the Chaos Space Marines, never a bad idea. Still got plenty of cultists, grenade launchers. So knocking the enemy around with grenade launchers might be the thing that stops them from beating a possessed squad um, straight up from the get-go. But plenty of defilers are well for, for that same exact reason, for the knockback. So that might be a thing. Dark Eldar, so it's not really... Pressure on too much. They're thinking, right, we're going to go for the critical location victory. They've got lads on the left. They've got lads on the right. Well, lasses as well. Let's be inclusive, boys and girls. Or something like that. Heavy bottle yeah, it's just constant heavy bottle turrets. Not feeling it, man. How much money have you got saved? Right, you've not got much saved money saved up at all. I suppose that is because you are building things. Here comes the cultists. They're going to go up stealthy in here. And I don't think there's enough DPS to stop them from capturing the critical location. Although the Hellions just trying to push them around. Of the D caps, they will be seen. Can they get it? It's not looking all that pretty for them. No, not quite. That's all them dead. Now I'm going to get the critical location in the center there. So they've really got to now dedicate themselves into capturing one or the other. It's a limited amount of time. We're very close indeed. Our sorcerer teleports right on over. And these guys are going to be lying in wait for a cheeky little ambush. Let's see if we can do some more dynamic stuff. I quite like how these Hellions are still alive from earlier on. The moment until that click starts going, they'll be coming in, but they've seen that army of defilers coming over. We're moving on forward. We have a jet bikes focusing on those cultists as quickly as possible, but defilers take out one. We have a jet bike. 13 seconds left. A limited amount of cultists. Are they able to pull it off? It's five left. The Reaver jet bikes have all been kaputted. And by the hair on their chinny chin chin. They just managed to clutch it out. It's Dark Elder almost getting it there. But they've also sacrificed a lot of potential aggression time that they could have been using to keep on top of the Chaos Space Marines. Chaos Space Marines now back in the game. Lovely placement for the mine field there, keeping the Mandrix at a distance. Her Volta is also holding these guys back for a little while. More Defilers on the way as they 
crab walks their way on over. And even one squad of scourges with triple dart lances is going to struggle to keep on top of these defilers. Another one is going to come out as well, so it's just defiler spam. Not wrong with it. If it keeps her in the game, it keeps her in the game. We had the warp beasts are out for a spatter here, so that's warning bells going off for the Chaos Space Marines here. We go for another heavy bottle turret. Are you going into tier 3 yet? I don't... Are you in tier 3? I can't quite... You haven't got the cross on your finger. Am I getting that confused with Space Marines? Either way... It's the Dark Eldar's game to lose here. They've hemmed the Chaos Space Marines in. Well, I suppose they've not got enough to follow that can actually push in. Warp Beast now rotating over to the left hand side of the map. I've seen some Warp Beast over here already munching and chewing on these guys. A raven flying on high. Listing post won't be able to stand up for very long. Fars Miss Blofford's two groups We've got one riding solo. And a squadron coming over on left hand side. Breaking the morale on those warp beasts. They will now start eating each other. That's the beast master starts kicking them into shape. But I don't know whether she's already used her ability or not. Doesn't seem like it. There we go. She's giving them the old whip crack away. And away they go. Now we've got the defiler who went on his lonesome. Being taken out. Chaos Sorcerer on his own. Gives him the old knockback. Well, teleporting away. But look at the amount of damage done in such a short amount of time. I've got the big bad Ravenjet. And the artillery coming towards him. Won't knock him back some. So he could just sit right in front of the defilers. All pretty like. Take him down. Without much fuss. Another Chaos Predator there. He can swap out for some. Oh, you have not gone for your tier 3. Right, okay. So nothing for you. We'll have to rely on some pink horrors to make all that work. But that being said, Pink Horrors are going to be chewed up by the Warp Beast pretty pretty quickly. But to be honest, the Defilers are being chewed up by the Warp Beast pretty quickly. Cannot underestimate how utterly devastating these guys are. Activating their piercing vision so they can spot the um, cultists. Once again, being turned against themselves. Yeah, the only real way to fight these guys back in a consistent manner is by breaking their morale. So plenty of flamers, plenty of artillery. To be fair, artillery does a lot of morale breaking as it does AoE damage. The more models you hit, the more morale damage you do. That's that's how I think it works. In fact, I'm fairly certain that's how it works. But the Warp Beast, even though their morale's broken, they seem to be quite chill with it. Oh no, never mind me. It looked like they were being chill, but then not quite. Double Raveners, they're not taking any prisoners yet. The Filer's numbers have been cut down pretty low by them. Also oh, got the Archon. Wonderful pink kit, by the by. Do a little bit of pink, but it's pink on pink, actually, north and south. There we go. Two in the pink and one nowhere else, thank you very much. As the Archon manoeuvres around and these warp beasts just point blank refuse to get the morale back. Need a friendly fist fight. Both warp beast squads are not vibing with anything. One Ravinger or Rav, Ra Ra Ravager. Aha, Ravager, I can read. It's doing stuff. Here come the horrors. And one volley does a quite a good chunk of damage to him. But has been terrified away there. The War Beast now back on track. Brought back forward by the Witches. I do believe that their combat stimulants also uh, keep morale up. So that's why you normally see them with the War Beast working together. In the Dark Elder were doing quite a good job doing the old assaulting the Chaos Space Marine base earlier on. But they've kind of just become a bit of a wet noodle all of a sudden. But the Defiles are dead. That's the main thing. Archon being... Oh, very nice. Been chained to the floor. By the Chaos Sorcerer. Here comes some warp light fire as well. Might lose both of Incubi. Crucible of Malediction. Changing those horror squads to fight themselves for a little while. But they do get them in the end. Well, that was very nice. A little bit of cast on cast action. Many people just firing away. Ravager falls, but a fresh one takes its place. The witches try and poke the horrors to death. The horrors not having any of it. Plenty more of them where they came from. Chronic Economy is 132 and 79. 
compared to 130 and 97. So beautiful economies for both sides here. Remarkable that the Chaos Space Wing player has been able to pull things back. But I do believe that that was in part due to the um, Dark Eldar trying to get a critical location countdown victory. Here's a dice of destruction. Pimp Wagon itself. Look at him. He's not even paying attention to what's going on. He's just simping on the front ladies. Well, even more front ladies do some bits and bobs in a most unpleasant and foul manner. Six minutes yeah, okay, a couple of horrors. We'll be breaking down the dice of destruction anytime soon. It's a big dart scythe going across, which has been chained down, but I assume that they're quite keen on that, to be honest. Not going to be put off by that at all. Combat drugs being activated, warp beasts charging on high. The dice of destruction takes care of these horror squads. And there we are. Sad time in the pipeline. The Chaos Space Marines. Yep, I think it was a case of, I mean, wonderful defence. You know, an ideal uh, choice to put the machine pit down here. Spawn a whole smorgasbord of defilers and then break things down. Really, really close down here as well. Uh, I mean, what was it? Just, just about maybe a five seconds difference between victory and loss straight away. Uh, massively uphill battle for the Chaos Space Marines once those um, uh, Reaver Jetbikes got their upgrade. Uh, but yeah, quite a solid state of affairs from both players. So yeah, so cheers, boys and girls, for watching at home. And if you want to support the channel, have a look at the old Patreon. £1 a month gets you once a game a week, and there is also a Discord where Discord things happen. Links in the description as always. My name's Mr. Landshark. Pleasure's always never short. Now, I'll see you in a bit. Peace.